Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Tokyo Conference 2023, hosted by Genno NPO Japan and supported by Yomiri Shimbun. This is Yuho Nishimura, Director of International Department of Genno NPO. And first, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all panelists and the guests. It is our great pleasure to host this Tokyo Conference again in person for the first time in three years by welcoming nearly 30 speakers uh, from 16 different countries, over 200 audiences in this venue only. I also wish to express our deep gratitude to all our sponsors, Hitachi Limited, Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, MUFG Bank Limited, Nomura Holdings Inc., Mitsui Fudosan Company Limited, and the Nippon Life Insurance Company for your general support in this conference. One year passed since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, this year's Tokyo conference is titled Overcoming Global Division and Conflict, and we will explore how to restore the peaceful international order and how to promote multilateral cooperation in our common challenges in this increasingly fragmenting world. Now, uh, first of all, I'd like to have an opening remark. I'm delighted to introduce to you Ms. Yoriko Kawaguchi, former Foreign Minister of Japan, and uh, Madam Kawaguchi also uh, serves as a member of Advisory Council of Tokyo Conference. Thank you very much, and uh, Ms. Kawaguchi, please come to the podium. Good afternoon. Thank you for the kind introduction. I am Kawaguchi Yoriko. May I welcome you all. At this Genron NPO, the host, there is an organization called the Advisory Council. And as the member of the Advisory Council, on behalf of the Council, I would like to welcome you all. I am delighted to see uh, this big participation. Thank you so very much. This weekend, this w there was the bilateral between President Xi Jinping and President Putin, as well as another bilateral uh, between Prime Minister Kishida, the presidency of G7, and Ukrainian President uh, Zelensky. And this was a week that was most impressive for us all. As we look back at the one week and another memorable week uh, for us, for the Japanese, it was Japan's uh, victory at the World Baseball Classic. My friend has said about this week that the Japanese has been on a roller coaster over the whole week. But we have to be more calm rather than emotional about Ukraine. We need to be calm-headed, uh, cool, headed, but uh, we were so passionate about the victory. It, indeed, it was a roller coaster emotion for myself. Now about the war against Ukraine, it has started one year ago. The world already was fragmenting, uh, but uh, it has further uh, become more divided. All at once, the world was already uncertain, and the world has become even more chaotic. Uh, the United Nations Security Council permanent members, which is supposed to be the leader of the world, do not comply with the international and law. And uh, they can do away uh, by protecting their own interest by force, not by word. And other countries cannot stop such a country. That is the kind of world uh, we are facing. Uh, this division is not limited only to national security. It's not only a division in international politics. The free market economy is also largely impacted in terms of cross-border challenges, including countermeasures against infectious disease, climate change, cooperation with developing countries, where international cooperation is essential, are not successful either. Food price, energy prices are rising, and all over the world, inflation continues to rise. Furthermore, this kind of inflation causes exacerbation of income disparity between the people and between the countries, 
and the global financial market is also under turmoil. In a nutshell, the prohibition of nuclear weapons or non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, these global regime that had functioned to a certain extent seems to be entirely dysfunctional. That is the situation we are in. How can we end the war? Beyond that, beyond ending the war, how can we establish a peace and what kind of peace can we establish? How can we continue the development and prosperity of the world as we have tried to do so far? The challenges right in front of us are massive. There are so many challenges that we have to deal with. Compliance with international law or rules-based governance are the fundamentals of democracies. And therefore, for us democracies, the realization of rules-based governance and the realization of peace, stability, and the prosperity of the world under democratic governance, these are so crucial for us democracies. As uh, the world is facing such a difficult turning point, as a member of the society, it is my position that we shall have to think about solutions based on accurate information and disseminate our uh, viewpoints. That is our responsibility and obligation. Social stability is not free. We cannot be a free rider. They are not a given. Because this is the basics of uh, democracies. Genron NPO has convened at a symposium to think about this matter, how to protect democracy, how to advance uh, democracy. That is the reason why this symposium has been uh, convened. Today, under this uh, open session, together with the brains who are with us today from all over the world, we would like to think about these challenges uh, together. So first of all, there will be initial comments uh, by the global experts. And then uh, under the title, One Year of War in Ukraine, uh, Can World Peace Be Restored? There will be the discussion about the reconstruction of peace. And then in second session, it will be the role of democracies on restoration of democratic governance and multilateral cooperation. The focus will be on the democracies in our uh, discussion. I would like to conclude my brief remarks with my prayer that today's symposium will be useful in some way or another for you all. Thank you. Ms. Kawaguchi, thank you very much for your warm introduction. And next, I'd like to have a remark from our organizer of the Tokyo conference. Mr. Yasushi Kudo, president of Geno NPO, will give a Welcome, Limak. Thank you very much. And Mr. Kudo, please come to the podium. Good afternoon. It's not a full house yet, but it will become fully seated eventually. And I thank you very much for coming here despite your busy schedule. And as the host, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to you all. Tokyo conference began in 2017. We, the Genro MPO, collaborated with 10 representative think tanks and other organizations to launch this international conference. Even from that then, the world was facing many tests, challenges regarding freedom, rule of law, and democracy. We thought it was necessary not just to defend these norms, but put our efforts together to confront those challenges. We thought that think tanks should contribute to that effort. And we thought that Tokyo should be the venue of sending those messages to the world. So 
the role of Japan and the responsibility of Japan is being tested in such historical dimension. During the past two years, uh, Tokyo Conference was held online because of the pandemic, and this is the first in-person meeting for the first time in three years, exactly when the cherry trees have come into full blossom. And it's a great pleasure to be able to see the authorities of the world. Um, today, we are being participated by the representatives of the the people whose opinions count the most in today's world. Why are these people and intellectuals gathering in Tokyo at this timing? It's because the world is standing at a watershed moment. Can the world unite together as we confront the global crisis? Or are we going to become fragmented? We are at such crossroads. I believe that we are in the phase of solidarity. The world has to cooperate in order to confront the challenges that we face. But the situation hasn't reached that stage yet. We are seeing crisis after crisis, and we have to do something about it. And we want to cause such debate in the Japanese society as well. Then how do we confront this situation? That is exactly what I hope we can debate today. That's why we are here. We have to think about many things. Madam Kawaguchi talked about the challenges that we face in the world, at least in Ukraine. Russia's aggression, it's one year, and yet the peace order of the world is still broken. If we look at the economic situation in the world today, there are many who are reminded of the Lehman Brothers. Who can solve this situation? We are seeing a stronger trend of everything being sought in terms of security. And due to the Ukrainian crisis, resource prices have skyrocketed, and there is more fission in the steps taken towards climate change. Can we leave this situation untouched? No, we don't think so. We have to stop the exacerbation of the division and turn back the steering towards convergence and to defend rule of law, freedom, and humanity in our society. That is why we have to put our efforts together to make our world more resilient and sustainable. That is our resolve. Already, we are seeing more extreme weather events. For the sake of the future of humanity, uh, we will become belated if we don't start today. So in today's debate, we are going to talk about how we can bring a halt to the aggression of Ukraine, what we can do in order to stop this aggression. We are in contingency, wartime. We have to resolve that. Another important theme for today's debate is the responsibility of democracy, freedom, equality, and basic human rights are the assets of humanity that were gained because of the hard efforts made by our ancestors. But democracy is not just receding in the world. Even the advanced, even in advanced democracies, citizens are questioning the effectiveness of this system, and mistrust towards uh, politicians is increasing, even in Japan. So it's no longer a world where you can gain votes just by saying it's a democratic nation. So once again, we need to regain and elevate the legitimacy of democracy. So we need to retrain and make more fit democracy and collaborate with each other. So even more efforts than we had made in the past is required on the part of democracies. We also coll must collaborate with many countries who have faith in the potential of democracy while acknowledging cultural and historical differences. And the citizens who reside in democracies shouldn't consider these as problems in other people's backyards. You have to think of them as your own problem, have ownership, and think how to resolve these issues by yourselves. 
Gendo MPO has been dialoguing with people of various countries, and we've constantly been thinking about the role of public and citizens. First, the public and citizens have to take the action, or else government won't take action. That is my belief. And in this conference, we are conducting an emergency survey. It's only been in three days since we launched, and we've already obtained 200 responses. But this means that this reflects what are in the minds of the many people around the world. So let me share with you some of the results. First of all, what is the greatest challenge the world is facing? The war in Ukraine and the retreat from world's peace. This was the response chosen by 70 people, 70% 70 of the people in Japan. And 50% of the respondents said that the confrontation between the USA and China and a new Cold War is the biggest challenge. And therefore, people think that the division must be resolved. President Biden of the United States says that the 21st century is going towards a confrontation between democracies and autocracies. I asked this very bluntly, but it's only 20% of the intellectuals who think so, and 40% of the intellectuals are thinking that such perspective is to be blamed because that's the kind of perspective that guides this kind of confrontation. Further, regarding the responsibility of democratic companies, there was only 8.1% who answered to deal with tyrannical countries. 24.8% said to build democracy at home. In other words, in Japan, let us rebuild democracy. 24.8% responded that that's what we need to do. And 42.4% said that we need to work in tandem with many countries for cooperation on global issues. More than 40%. This is probably close to the majority of the people in this room. Further, what's the role of Japan in Sino-American confrontation? I've been engaged in various uh, surveys, so I'm not saying that this is the extraordinary or this is the outlier. It's not an outlier. This is a general trend. focus only on the relations with the United States. Only 6.7% support such ideology. Of course, all Japanese people attach importance to our relationship with the United States. That does not mean we can uh, forget about our relationship with China. And 54.3% said that that's how they think. And Japan should not focus on either country. It should work on the development of the global economy, 34.8% responded. In other words, people think that we should collaborate with the world. They are not seeking further division. And this was quite a surprise to me. Japan is far away from Ukraine, but many people are thinking seriously about resolving this war. I found something interesting about the division of responses. First, you see here that military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine is important, 23.8%. But at par with this response, persuasion of Russia by China, India, and others, 24.3%. Sanctions against Russia. I think we should continue sanctions, but Japanese intellectuals not really support this, only 3.3%. We at the think tank have been hosting this debate since yesterday. What's the meaning of these sanctions? Is this truly being effective? This has impacted the global economy. How do we deal with this reality? And I'm sure that will be taken up in the debate to unfold today. In other words, Japanese intellectuals are watching this war. They think that they it should be stopped. And in order to restore peace, what do we need to do? I think Japanese intellectuals are serious about it. Uh, there were a series of news this week. Madam Kaguchi said that we defeated the United States in the finals of the WBS, which was great. But another thing, Xi Jinping visited Russia and began to 
act as an intermediary. And at exactly the same timing, Prime Minister Kishida, the chair of G7, after his visit to India, visited Ukraine and met with President Zelensky. So the world is about to take a new step. And exactly at that moment, this Tokyo conference is taking place. Sorry for having kept you waiting. It's because we are with the 10 think tanks, and we were thinking about what proposals we should make to the chair of the G7, and sorry to have kept you waiting. Yesterday, Prime Minister Kishida came back to Japan, and this evening, he is going to come to our event. We can directly hand this proposal to the Prime Minister. So the world is uh, taking a new step, and our responsibility is being questioned. So that is the context in which we are unfolding our debate. Let us now begin Tokyo Conference 2023. Thank you for your kind attention.